What's the first thing that happened after the Big Bang? Where did the first objects grow? How did they grow? Were they individual stars? Were they black holes? Were they whole galaxies that would then divide themselves into stars? How did that all work? Uh, did black holes come first and grow galaxies around them? Or did the galaxies make the black holes? And how do the stars get born themselves? Throughout his life, Dr. John Mather has been asking some of the largest and most challenging questions about our universe and helping in no small way to answer them. John is the senior project scientist of the James Webb Space Telescope, the most complex technology human beings have ever made. It took 20,000 people, $10 billion, and more than 20 years to build this exquisitely powerful orbiting telescope that can see billions of years into the past. It's the most difficult science project NASA has ever done. The hardest problems we had to deal with for the telescope design were number one, the, the mirrors. The telescope is 21 feet across, got seven times as much collecting area as the Hubble, uh, but the rocket could only lift half as much mass. So got a bit something super ultra light to be able to do this, and it has to be awfully accurate. It's made out of beryllium mirrors covered with gold, so it looks beautiful, which was pretty hard to do. Learning how to focus it in outer space after it's launched is pretty tricky. So that was a math problem, and we solved that one. And then, of course, there's the need to keep the powerful infrared sensors shielded from the heat of the sun, Earth, and moon. Shield is a big umbrella, blocks the sun and the heat of the Earth and the moon. So ours is about as big as a tennis court and it's got five layers of metalized plastic to, to get it cold enough. And um, how do you make that thing unfold? Nobody ever needed a big piece of plastic like that in space that would fold up into a little box and all buttoned down so they would survive the launch. So we had to invent that whole thing, and it was tricky. It took four designs before we were done designing it. Thumbs up from Jean-Luc Voyer, all systems are go. Finally, we got to push the button on uh, Christmas morning of 2021. Up it went and it worked perfectly. The rocket was perfect. Everything deployed and unfolded exactly as it was supposed to do. The day we really knew the Webb telescope was working was when we got it in focus. And they popped up the picture and every place you could look in the picture, there was another galaxy. In this picture, we're looking at a very, very, very tiny patch of sky. But what we're seeing is thousands of galaxies in this little tiny area of sky. And you say, well, if I took a picture of the entire sky like that, there would be hundreds of billions or trillions of galaxies altogether. It's measuring the most distant things we can possibly see. The, most, the first galaxies that grew after the Big Bang. We're looking through dust clouds to see stars being born today. We are looking at the little planets orbiting around other stars to see are there any of them like Earth. So this is a fantastically powerful tool that we've built. The web has captured some of the most detailed and astonishing images the world has ever seen. All these machines are for testing things before you actually... Right, we want to make sure they're going to work when they're up there in space and we can't fix them anymore. Gotcha. So what we do here is we change the temperature, hot and cold, and we make them in vacuum as they will be in outer space. First, this isn't all we have to do. We have to test on the vibration device to make sure they can withstand the rocket launch. You just can't possibly imagine all the ways something can go wrong until you see it and do it. We tested the web telescope right there. So you can to, you said how many decibels? 150 decibels. 150 decibels. And I've uh, got to make sure you don't wreck it because what if it's 160 and it wasn't designed for that? The doors are that thick. And when you close the doors and do the test, they say, everybody leave. Because even the amount of sound that gets out is a lot. Mather learned this build a little, test a little ethos during his PhD project. My thesis project for getting my PhD was at University of California in Berkeley. And the idea was to measure the cosmic microwave background radiation with a payload hanging from a balloon going up uh, 25 miles up above most of the atmosphere. It went up and it did not work. Okay, 
get to write a thesis about something that does not work. How did it not work? Well, for three different reasons. It, things did not actually function properly. It's cold way up there, so we had a motor that froze. We had two parts of the electronic boxes that didn't function properly when they were cold. So NASA asked for a proposal for new satellite missions that very summer. And I said, boss, my thesis project failed. We should try it in outer space. Well, that's a lot of nerve, isn't it? But I thought, well, why not ask? So we sent it in to NASA and they decided it was worth supporting. So uh, 15 years later, uh, it was launched into space and it worked. Mather and his team showed that the cosmic microwave background radiation, the oldest light in the universe, is nearly completely uniform, confirming the Big Bang theory with extraordinary accuracy. The team measured small, hot and cold fluctuations in the radiation, showing differences in the density of matter in the early universe, which led to the formation of galaxies. A discovery which Stephen Hawking said was the greatest scientific discovery of the 20th century, if not of all time. For this work, Dr. Mather was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics in 2006. Mather hasn't rested on his laurels. He spent the past 10 years working on the telescope that will supersede the web. He also helps the next generation of astrophysicists through the John and Jane Mather Foundation for Science and the Arts, as well as supporting summer interns to work on science policy at Capitol Hill through the Society of Physics Students. My advice to, to school teachers in general is make this thing that we're all learning together exciting by participation. Scientists don't learn things out of books mostly. We pick up rocks, we turn them over, we see what's there. Uh, we say, I don't understand that, let's figure this out. Uh, so learning what's in a book and passing a test is exactly the opposite of what scientists do for a living. So I think I'd like uh, all young people to have the opportunity to discover for themselves. And that would be my ideal. I'm Dr. John C. Mather, and I'm the senior project scientist on the James Webb Space Telescope.